Hello everyone. My name is Sandra Fuchs and I'm a customer application support engineer working in the global customer support team of NXP, focusing on my first smart card IC products and my first software service offerings. Welcome to this short webinar covering the transaction timer feature of our latest released products, MyFair Desfire EV3 and MyFair Plus EV2. The transaction timer feature allows to configure a maximum time that a transaction can take to avoid interference by man in the middle attacks. This feature avoids the possibility of keeping the card powered and not finishing an ongoing transaction by an attacker through, for example, spying the communication and withholding some commands from being sent to the card. The transaction timer feature is a card related feature, meaning it's not affecting the deployed reader infrastructure. A desired transaction timer value of either 1, 10 or 100 seconds can be set on the card side. This setting can be done individually for single applications on MyFair Desfire EV3 cards or for the full card on MyFair Plus EV2. Once the transaction timer is set on the card, it counts every transaction that's executed between the reader and the card. The timer starts counting for every application selection on MyFair Desfire EV3 or on MyFair Plus EV2, it starts counting for the first command that's sent to the card after the card was activated on ISO 14443 layer 4. As long as the transaction timer doesn't expire, the regular command um, interaction is not influenced by the feature, meaning there's no change required on the reader infrastructure if it's already existing. In case the transaction timer would expire before the transaction was finished, because for example, an attacker was spying or interfering in the transaction or trying to withhold the transaction, then the card would simply reset itself to the ISO 14443 idle state. This means that the transaction was not finished and in principle stopped and invalidated by the card itself as the timer expired. To execute a new transaction or to start again, the card simply needs to be powered again onto ISO 14443 layer 4 and then it's ready for any new command exchange and for any new transaction. Here in this slide, you can see in the top picture a typical scenario of a valid transaction. Um, what you can see here is a reader terminal interacting with a MyFair Desfire EV3 smart card and starting the transaction with an application selection and then sending several commands like authentication, read or write commands throughout the transaction. In the end, the command that's needed to finish the transaction is the so-called commit transaction command, which concludes the transaction and writes several updates to the card in an atomic operation. In the first example on top, the transaction was finished in time, which means the transaction timer also did not expire and overall the transaction was successful. In contrast to this, you can see in the below picture an unsuccessful transaction. Here you can see that the reader terminal is interacting also with a MyFed Desfire EV3 smart card, but a malicious attacker is trying to interfere the communication with a malicious device. The transaction in principle starts in the same way as in the valid scenario with application selection and sending some arbitrary commands between the reader and the card. But what's happening here is that the whole time during the command exchange, the attacker is spying the transaction and intercepting the command response exchange with his malicious device. In the right moment, when sending the commit transaction command, the attacker stops the command and doesn't forward it to the card. 
meaning he keeps the card powered um, with a malicious device and holds the transaction. This described scenario, for example, would allow him to enter a public transit system without having a valid ticket and just holding the transaction. In case a controlling officer would come to check his card, he could still finish the transaction by sending the commit transaction command and his malicious device to the card. But instead, no controlling officer would come to check his card. He would simply shut down his device and unpower the card, meaning he could sneak into a public transit system without a valid ticket. Now the transaction timer feature avoids these kind of attacks and these kind of scenarios from happening because with the transaction timer, it's not longer possible to hold the, to hold the card powered for an unlimited amount of time. The transaction timer would expire and the card would reset itself, meaning the malicious attacker has no chance anymore um, to finish the transaction um, in this kind of way. Now that you know how exactly the transaction timer feature works and also which benefits this feature brings, let's have a look into how the timer feature can be enabled on the card. For MyFedest Fire EV3, the transaction timer can be enabled individually for each application on the card, meaning also the transaction timer value can be different for every application. To enable it, it, the set configuration command needs to be sent to the card with option 55. And once the feature was enabled, um, this is also reflected in the parameter pdcap2.2, which you can get as a response to the authenticate ev2 first command. After the timer was enabled, this feature is active all the time and the timer starts counting for every application selection. On MyFair Plus EV2, the transaction timer can be enabled for the complete card. And enablement is done by writing the ptgap2.2 value in the field configuration block. Once the transaction timer was enabled, it starts counting when receiving the first command after ISO 14443 layer 4 card activation. The transaction timer is active on MyFair Plus EV2 in security level 1 security level three, and also the security level one free mixed mode. To find more information about the transaction timer feature, please take a look at the NXP website, at the product pages of MyFairDeskFire EV3 and MyFairPlus EV2, and please also head to our NXP doc store where you can find confidential documents like all data sheets and application notes. Thanks very much for joining this webinar and have a great day.